Hey there, folks. Welcome back to The Overflow. My name is Micah Curtis. And I'm Alex Baldwin, also known as The Hat Man. And we've returned once again to answer the questions that sadly we were not able to get to on the podcast. And let's go ahead and just dive right into it. Um, I know that last week we did entertainment because I mistakenly answered, asked, or started answering an entertainment question without thinking about it. So do you want to start with politics this week, partner, or do you want to just keep Yeah, let's, let's start with politics this week. All right. Let's, let's get it right this time. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. So for politics... I want to get the long ones out of the way first. So, Sir of God 777 said, after watching the overflow, seeing how you guys reacted, felt the need to point out something. Yes, there is a question. Main reason I give Alex Jones the time of day is that a lot of what he talks about I've either looked into or found to be highly accurate or I've personal experience with, especially the supernatural side. So when it comes to Jones, then I get it. He can be very hard to handle. I give him the benefit of the doubt, not just because he's sometimes fun to watch, but what I've seen and experienced in my own life. He's right more often than not. Question is that, do you see why I and others will at least give him the time of day now? Um, so, no. Because, and here's the, here's the thing about Alex Jones. And this is the same reason I don't take the Gateway Pundit seriously. Is Alex Jones has had to put out several retractions and several um, apologies as time has gone on two people that he has outright lied about. And yeah. you know, Pizzagate's a really good example of that. Uh, Sandy Hook is another really good example of that. Yeah. You know, if you feel him credible on issues of the spirit, I mean, that's clearly up to you. I don't find him accurate there either. But I, I one thing I constantly tell people is that you don't have to... If, if I don't take someone seriously, you don't have to, you know, ditch them because I don't take them seriously. Watch whoever you want, and then, you know, that what what conclusions you come to is up to you. But, um, personally, I am not a, um, I am not going to take Alex Jones or InfoWars seriously. Um, I think that a lot of times they're very over the top. I think that a lot of the things that they do are very emotional, and they don't, you know, whenever you're going to be reporting on something, you, you can't, you have to be able to take emotions out of it, even in the most fucked up of scenarios. It's not easy to do, but you got to at least give it a shot. I know that we interject some some emotion into it, but you know, not to the point where we're, you know, screaming and ranting and raving and we're not taking the the issue, you know, and the evidence on its face. So so w- w- let's agree to disagree on this one. Yeah, it's just the the sort of things what you describe, honestly, that that kind of reminds me of like coast to coast AM almost, and I'm not, I'm not knocking this at all. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not really going to question what you experienced, what you went through, because I don't have an explanation for it. I, I wasn't there. Obviously, I can't, I can't tell you what's real, what's not, what to believe, what not to believe. But at the same time, I would hesitate to say that because something like what Alex Jones has talked about has happened to you, that, that makes him right more often than not. Um, I would just take it with, with a grain of salt. Like I, I get where you're coming from now, why, why you're more attracted to him now. But you know, like, like Micah said, I'm going to have to just agree to disagree on this one. Um, I can see why he's amusing, but why he's sometimes fun to watch because the oh the yeah, the man the man's thing. a meme factory for sure. Yeah, the, the the gay frogs thing, I will never get over that. Yeah, that that's something else. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's um, it's it's not it's, shows it's is doomed too. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's it's not it's not something I'm ever gonna really take that seriously. But yeah, you know, I, not not den- not denigrating you at all, servant of God. But yeah, no, you know, we're no. Um, it's just not something that I'm gonna. I when it comes to my my news sources, I am very strict on it because I hold them to the same standards that I hold myself as a, as a writer. So and as in my don't my own journalistic work that I've done part time for years. So I hold myself to that standard if I'm gonna write because my specialty is editorial. Um, my, if I'm going to write a piece, I'm going to do my research. You know, I'm going to make sure that I'm not just sh- throwing out there what I'm throwing out there. 
all willy nilly. It's got to have grounding in something. So, so yeah, probably never going to take Alex Jones that seriously. If you want to, I'm not going to tell you not to. That's that's your decision. So, all right. From um, the woman who loves me, Serena. And I'm kidding again. Sorry. Gotta, I'm I'm not going to stop that inside joke. I think it's hilarious. But uh, <laughs> okay. So Serena asked us. Over the last two years, I had co-workers and classmates throw a temper tantrum at me or someone related to me because they either found a word offensive or had an opinion of mine to be uh, thought of an opinion of mine to be bigoted. Keep in mind that these individuals are my superiors in both age and workplace rank. First time this happened was when my former 33-year-old co-worker slash supervisor got triggered and yelled at me because I said something negative about feminism and denied the wage gap at a public conference for female employees in health. This is one of the two times she did this to me. Second time this happened was last week when a 25-year-old gay student in my game design program got triggered at another student in our group for saying the word sissy in relation to a video game character we were creating and not him. When I told him to check himself and his behavior, he threatened to have me and the girl removed for the club. He is a club official, by the way. Club president immediately took his side despite his rude and belligerent attitude towards the younger women. These people will justify this behavior by saying things like words are violence and am I, am, I am really passionate about the subject, which in my opinion is not an excuse for such immature behavior. You would be correct. It seems due to the current political climate, adults in positions of power think they can bully other adults for small offenses and throw temper tantrums at them, when, which is being reinforced by the quote-unquote liberal work culture. How do you handle people like this when the odds are stacked against you? Tell me your thoughts. I have a feeling that we lived in any of the time period prior to this. These people would either be severely reprimanded for such behavior or lose their current positions altogether. So, sorry for the long email. Had to provide context. No worries. So, my whole thing, and I have been in similar situations, um, also dealing with customers who act like this um, in, in my field, is to be the sane one in the insane conversation. The reason being is that there's always somebody looking on the outside in. Even if you lose the argument, it's not, you might lose the battle, you want to win the war here. Because if you're standing there and you stand by your position and you stand by your beliefs and you have confidence in these things, it's going to be noticed by other people when the other person across from you is being irrational, childish, and emotional. Um, now, in some situations, like if, you're, if this is a, a business, it's your boss, Jocko Wilnick, I think, makes really good, um, gives really good advice on things on how to kind of navigate that situation. I would advise looking him up, and he can kind of give a much better idea of how to navigate it. My style when it comes to that situation is I try to reason with the person as best I can, and then if if I can't get them to you know be reasonable, I just walk away from the situation. That's just me, though. So, yeah, that that that's my prescription is just stay the course and be the adult because whether people will admit it or not most John and Jane Q publics if they see an adult in a situation and they, they see a rational person in a situation they will gravitate gravi you know gravitate towards that person not the irrational person who's doing all the yelling and screaming and ranting and raving so yeah. that's at least my experience hat man what do you think I just keep my mouth shut most of the time. Just if if I if I hear people going off or whatever, and trust me, last job I worked, um, anything related to Trump was oh boy. Let's just say I was very very outnumbered <laughs> in in the office. Um, it's it's just one of those things where it's like you keep you keep your head down and God, how many times have I said that now? I feel I feel like I've I've, I've talked about this thing for for overflow or general Q and A stuff like so often. It's like just just keep your head down, just keep the opinions to yourself, and as long as you can get by with doing the work without having to compromise on your beliefs, and just just do that. I don't know. 
I don't know. It's not an easy situation to be to be. No, it's you know more, more often than not, I would agree with Hatman. Just keep your head down, and do the job. But if it comes to a point of conflict, that's when my advice comes in. It's, yeah, you. That's when you you know just be the adult. You know. Yeah, I. Mm-mm. I guess I'm lucky in that regard because I never had to deal with any sort of open conflict, like you know being questioned about something or uh yeah having having something i've i've done be misconstrued for whatever reason but see i i have the advantage in in some scenarios of being the big crazy looking tattooed white guy (laughs) so i don't oftentimes get challenged by people and when i get looks like weird looks from people i just smile at them like because yeah. it's both a smile of confidence because I'm very confident in what I believe, but also a smile of, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. So. All right. So let's move on. Uh, Kale Bach wants to know, thoughts on <laughs> socialists saying that capitalism is legalized mugging? <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> That's like preemptive self-defense. It's a, it's a it's a statement that makes no sense. Uh, I find it hilarious considering the socialist dictators use their power to take from the people. Uh, yeah, I was about to say if there is a legalized mugging out there, it's it's big government and socialism. Well, they already talked about how it's slavery, so yeah. But no, the the <laughs> if, you're, if you're a slave, do you own anything? I guess then it isn't legalized mugging, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, it's. I'm sorry. The idea that it's legalized mugging is just preposterous. Taxes, uh, yeah. taxes are legalized mu- mugging, not yeah. not capitalism. Capitalism is legalized. Mu- I, I was not aware that you received something in return for your money being taken from you in in a mugging incident. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was not aware of that. <laughs> I yeah, I would I, I the way I they stole, I, they stole thirty thousand dollars from me, but at least I got a car. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. Now, my my uh, one of my favorite ways to put it is th- is that capitalism is sex, socialism is rape. So yeah. All right, Diego Camacho wants to know thoughts on Spain possibly growing their balls back. Reminded that the Reconquista was the crusade that worked. Um, I don't know what's going on in Spain. I have no idea either. I'm not paying attention to to Spain really. I know there was a part of it where most of the wealthy people lived at wanted their independence because the rest of the country was being a fucking drain on them. Uh, hell, of course I'm gonna forget the name of it, but I know I know the region you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. My general thought is is that I can't blame them. <laughs> then people wonder why rich people are leaving New York and California and moving to Texas and Florida. Mm-hmm. And taking their businesses with them. Um, Autist Whisperer wants to know, who out of the Democratic primaries is going to throw the first shade and will they adopt Trump's tactics? So, shade is already being thrown. Shade was thrown when Biden announced. Yeah, shade was thrown before that. Like, like I said, That's all right. of the outlets are going to be at war with one another. Because they're all going to have their person. You know, I saw one outlet say that um, it was Kamala Harris owns a gun for self-defense. That is a disqualifying factor for me. <laughs> oh, my God. That I'm like, was I'm absolutely like, How dare Kamala Harris, as much as I don't like her, have a firearm to protect herself in case someone tries to rape her? Like, are you fucking serious? That was so... That was absolutely insane. It's like she's not she's not progressive enough because she owns a gun for self. And they they said it was for self defense too. Having a gun for self defense is wrong. I guess I guess the revolutionary socialists aren't progressive enough. I guess not. (laughs) Holy shit! But no, the um. Yeah, shades already been thrown. I am I am interested for the debates because I am curious as to the interactions between Biden and Bernie. Um, Biden is destroying everyone in the field right now, which I called he would. 
because he is the incumbent and the incumbents in the Democratic Party, the old white people, are going to want Biden, not Bernie. Whether you people realize it or not. Even though the um, millennials are the biggest voting block in, in the Democratic Party, well, in just in general, it's, it's not enough. It's never going to be enough because Biden is going to present himself as the moderate. So Biden will, if, if he keeps at his current strategy of trying to prove that Trump, trying to say that Trump's a racist and bringing up Charlottesville, he will lose because the people are not behind that. You know, people don't think Donald Trump is a racist, especially people on the right. You know, the idea that you're going to turn the, um, the people in the middle on that is just ridiculous because even the people in the middle don't think he's a racist. So I think that some, some voting demographics are going to start shifting, right? Because of a lot of current anti-Semitism, and they're seeing Donald Trump calling it out and they're not seeing the left do it. So you got to think of all these synagogue shootings and what they tell the Jewish mm-hmm. community. I think that we're going to actually see the Jewish um, vote start to turn. So and we might see more, but well, I, I think that the Hispanic vote is starting to turn. We're going to start to see the black vote start to turn too because the Democrats don't don't have a message anymore for, for minority groups. So aside from the other guys are racist, well, it's going to come to a point where you have to prove it. And they're not mm-hmm. they're not capable of doing so. So either way, it, it didn't work in 2016. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah. Needless to say, though, it's it's going to be shade. I'm I'm interested because Biden is going to be in a position where he's going to have to defend capitalism, and I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes. Because mm-hmm. one of the questions, if they ever, I don't know if they, if they're ever going to add the Fox have add Fox News as a debate, but if they do, one of the questions will be to Joe Biden: What do you think of Donald Trump's declaration that America will never be a socialist country? That will be a very interesting question to be asked. So, but if they don't ever go to Fox, it's just going to be one giant circle jerk, and that's basically just going to be the incumbent who gets it. Because keep in mind, the media is corrupt. I'll never forget Rachel Maddow hugging Hillary Clinton before a debate. Mm-hmm. Donna Brazil leaking questions, so on and so forth. They are corrupt. All right, Knox the Last wants to know, why don't people get on China and India's asses for their pollution if they're so concerned about global warming or climate change? About that, that's the thing. The United States has cut down carbon emissions considerably. And China and India, they keep going up. And up. And up. On top of that, the, the Paris Accords gave both of those countries leniency. Why? Not majority white. The West has to do everything for the whole world. We, we, we have to save everybody, but oh, by, by no means don't expect them to save them fucking selves. Ugh, it's ridiculous. Remember what I said? You're excused you are totally excused of of any wrongdoing if you fit into one of the marginalized boxes. Yep. That is their philosophy. I don't understand why why they don't go after China more. I mean, China being the ultra-repressive country as well. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I don't know. China's more like a capitalist communist country. Wouldn't that boggle their fucking minds too much? If they had minds left... All right. Sure. Last politics question. Insul Mafioso wants to know thoughts. Uh, yeah, wants to know thoughts on the football association in the UK. So soccer um, banning champagne in willing celebrations due to quote unquote religion and quote unquote the age of players within some teams. Take a guess which religion. Hmm. Buddhism. No, alcohol? I know exactly. The Mormons. <laughs> the Mor- <laughs> With the massive Mormon population in Britain. <laughs> But no, we we know who you're talking about, and and yeah, it's yeah. it's ridiculous. It's childish. They don't have to drink it if they don't want to. It's a free country, or at least that's what yeah. everyone tries to tell me. I saw, I saw a gif the other day. Gif, uh, you're wrong. And you will be wrong. Choosy developers choose gif. Anyway, I saw one of those uh, the other day of. A, I guess it was some kind of award ceremony, but a Muslim dude was up there getting the, an award too. And a woman in a very, very revealing bikini uh, was holding all the awards and stuff as they were being handed out. 
Muslim dude takes his hat off as she comes by, covers his face with it. And I'm like, this is... See, this is doing it right. You... It's doing the thing this this in I guess the the Quran as it is in the Bible too. You know, if your eye is causing you to sin, it's better for you to cut it out and throw it away. Yeah. Instead of you know forcing other people to acquiesce to whatever the hell you're demanding. It's. But then again, this is what happens when you say individualism is a tool of white supremacy. Oh God. Don't even get me started that on that bullshit. Yeah, Jesus Christ. All right. I was brain cells with that image. Yeah. Entertainment time. Yay, entertainment. I like this one. Yep. Long question from Serena, and then we'll get to one from Talon that we missed. Um, so Serena asks, in reference to your um, to my Jax's ending video, there were a lot of social justice warriors, and we was Kang's black people trying to justify the MK11 ending by either downplaying the struggles of other races in favor of blacks saying that the slavery of the Irish and the Jews' experience was not the same as blacks in Africa. Well, yeah, it's because it's not... People in Africa were selling their own, selling other Africans. Mm -hmm. But that's because they were from different tribes. Because it's almost like people see... Like, there's even subcultures and cultures. God. Anyway. Mm -hmm. um, Or saying how if colonialism never happened, then Africa would be Wakanda, which I highly doubt. Well, yes, if it... if there Because there are tribes that weren't affected by it, and they certainly didn't create Wakanda. So, mm-hmm. a lot of comments in the video, I can assume, were black people fetishizing Africa, treating Africa like a black utopia, despite it having the highest black-on-black murder rate, plagued by corrupt governments and having racist political groups, using the sins of colonialism to justify the murders and land, lo- land robbery of the white minority. It's South Africa for you. Why do these black people know nothing of the full history of Africa except for colonialism and who have little connection to no connection to it outside of their ancestry fetishize its content so hard, especially in the media? Well, there's a lot of of misinformation. Welcome to Afrofuturism, too. There is that, too. So let's talk about that. There's first off, there's a reason that Black Panther is a science fiction comic. Um because uh, it's science fiction. Um, and that's part of the reason why I like Black Panther as much as I do. Is It's a great sci-fi book. Probably one of my favorite sci-fi street-level comic books ever is Chris, Christopher Priest's Black Panther. Um, recommended to anybody who loves, who loves the character, because that's what the movie's based on. But anyway, um, there's a lot of misinformation um, put out there among certain want to want to be black leaders about how evil America is and how awesome Africa is. Even though if you were to go to Africa, you would know that it sucks. And I say that is no disrespect to anybody who lives there, but there's a reason that we get a lot of African immigrants who come through the system legally here and also from Ethiopia to Israel. And again, they go through the, tr- the proper processes so, um, yeah, it, it's basically misinformation. This idea that there is this this connection to the continent, and I don't get it. I've also never understood on the other end misinformation from white supremacists like Richard Spencer, Millennial Woes, or those types who say that I should feel some sort of connection to um, to Europe give a fuck about Europe. <laughs> like I, I'm Scottish and German. I don't give a fuck about either of them. And I, and I, you couldn't pay me to live there. You know, I have no desire. And if there was a right of return, I'd still stay in America. Like Jesus, like fuck. Like that, that is, it, it is a preposterous idea that comes from that. You know, a lot of people that I know who have that, who have these beliefs that I, I am very friendly with. You know, I, they, they've admitted to me they've never gone to Africa, probably will never visit. Well, it's like, what, what the fuck does it matter? You're an American. American. Just underline it three times. You know, there's nothing, nothing wrong with being of a certain background. We're all of different backgrounds. It's a nation of immigrants. So, ugh, God. I feel you know, like I haven't answered the question yet. I 
I'll say this. I think if Jax did not say the word woke, the whole thing wouldn't have blown up as, as much as it did. Maybe so, because it the the usage of it was you could tell it was a white guy. Yeah. And that's yeah. I, I know people who have worked at Netherrealm Studios. The staff is like ninety percent white. So it's you could tell it was a white guy pandering. You know, yeah. The um it's also it's it's sort of like how you can tell Black Panther, I don't believe was written like by a white guy. I don't think the film was. I don't think so either. I want to say, um, but and you can tell, like Christopher Priest's Panther, you can tell is not written by a white guy. Yeah, you know, it's not written by somebody who's pandering. It's written by somebody who's qu- doing quite the opposite of pandering. There's like the funny thing about um, Black Panther by Priest is that race is only mentioned as an aside to make a commentary on exactly this sort of thing and oppose it. I want to say it's in issue 5 of volume 3 of Panther, which is the the Christopher Priest run, where Panther basically gives a Martin Luther King Jr.-esque message of we should all embrace our common humanity, his exact words. So, part of the reason why I love that version of the character and why I think it translated to... uh, to the MCU so well because you don't see Panther judge anyone based on their race. No. Mm-mm. You you see that you know his the decency that he treats Ross with, whereas Shuri, who has never interacted with anybody outside of Wakanda, really, um, is the one who calls him a white boy. So, and honestly, it kind of made her look like a bitch when she did it. Mm-hmm. I love the character of T'Challa. I don't watch Panther tonight, man. T'Challa. <laughs> no, I don't watch Civil War. Because he really was one of the best parts of Civil War, too. The look on his face when he's um, talking to Widow, you know something's about to go down, just in the way that he... He looks like a man who just lost his father. That's not an easy thing to, to act as. Like, that... God damn, that's such a good movie. And he is so good in it. So... I, I I truly believe that it's it wasn't pandering that made Black Panther as successful. I genuinely think that a big part of it was how good um why is his name escaping me who plays him? Chadwick Boseman um was in Civil War. He was really fucking good in that movie. So I don't know. I, I love I will say that and of I, I do still feel some of that MCU exhaustion but if i will admit if panther's trailers are good enough and ryan coogler can can bring in a really good villain like the original white wolf hunter or he said he wants to do craven the hunter and i'm like that could be interesting so if coogler can sell me on it he's one of the few directors i think that would be able to sell me on on keeping with the mcu and being hyped about those films Still not feeling it quite yet, but I could see myself getting getting back into it. It's just gonna take some take some coaxing. Kind of need a cigarette and a break right now. So, all right. I think this question is properly answered. Hatman, do you have anything to add? Um, I don't think so. I don't think I've got anything right now, except for yeah, Afrofuturism is is that's got a lot to do with the fetishizing of what could have been or what should be or, or things like that. Mind if I plug something? Go for it. So I will say this though. Um, members of our audience like Serena and others who are very, who are fun, fun people to interact with, even if it's just through emails and such are part of the reason that I'm hoping to do more conventions and stuff in the future. So I get to meet you guys. Um, keep in mind if you are interested in traveling to Chicago in August or, um, are live in the area and would, wouldn't uh, be against going to a convention, the international conference on men's issues will be, um, in, let me grab the date real quick. August August 16th, 17th, 16th, and 18th, 17th, 18th at the O'Hare International Airport in Chicago. So I will 
I will be there. Um, Hatman will most likely be there, barring something insane. Um, and then, of course, there are other people that will be there as well. Aiden Paladin's going to be there with us as well. Uh, Sargon and Dankula. Um, who else? Is, uh, obviously, the Honey Badgers will be there. They're the hosts. Mm-hmm. Um, Robbie Sove of Reason will be there as well. Among And uh, Tommy Sotomayor was just recently announced as one of the presenters. I'm looking forward to meeting Tommy. I, I really like him quite a bit. So... Yeah, that's going to be a hell of a uh, thing. So, something to consider. Um, if you want to know where to find information, you can just go to icmi2019.icmi.info. All right, let's move on to Talon Silverbane had a question about yes. a video done by Accursed Farms. Uh, if you've never seen Freeman's Mind, it's it's my personal favorite machinima ever. It's fucking hilarious. Um, just, it, it's, hey, man, have you seen Freeman's Mind? Um, not in years and years and years. Okay, well, you can probably attest it's it's funny as hell. It's yeah, it is. I was I was waiting for the hit that the was, shame hat man button, but nope. That today. was it was that, and I think Arby and the Chief that were like the big draws for Machinima's channel back in the day, weren't they? Yeah, I believe so. I want to say there was one more. That and the Super Best channel. Friends. Yes, there you go. That and then the Maximilian was was part of that too, but then Machinima folded. So, oddly enough, right around the time that well, they dropped Max, and then they folded the next day, mm-hmm. and then that was right around the time Max was almost at the one million subscriber mark, and then after that, um, like the the super best friends broke up like two weeks earlier, which that was a sad video to watch. I wasn't a big fan of their content, but I'd watch it on occasion. So. But anyway, Talon Silvermane asked, um, by chance have I watched the video on games as service as is fraud? Would like to get our thoughts on games as a service in general. So, um, Ross freely admitted in the video that he is not a legal expert um, at all, but he tried to make a case for games as a service being fraud based on current legal definition, plus current laws on software sales in the United States the um, um, the EU and Australia. Mm-hmm. So I thought the case he made was pretty solid. Basically what he outlined is is that in all three of these areas, there have been um, major court decisions for us, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, for um, the um, for the EU and for the UK, their highest courts have decided that basically you own your software if it is being sold, as a copy, as mm-hmm. as a good, um, and currently software is sold and classified as a good in those areas. Mm-hmm. So the idea that you're selling a game as a service, meaning it has a specific start time and stop time, like a haircut, like a car wash, like a brothel, to be honest, um, or something along those lines. It can be revoked lines, at any moment. Too. can be revoked at any moment. Now, the problem is, is that software in these areas is not sold like that. It is sold as a good. So the idea that these games are only going to exist for this particular amount of time, but you're selling it not as a good, good is, is a fraudulent act. Yeah. I, the thing about it here in America, and he admits this, is because we it, there is no Supreme Court decision on it, likely it would probably have to go to the Supreme Court to define whether or not it actually is fraud. I think that being somebody who deals with insurance fraud, he does make a pretty good case because if you are selling this software as you own this copy of the software, like I have just to show you guys, I'm still simming Mortal Kombat in the background. That's why my head keeps turning. Um, I own that copy of Mortal Kombat, that, that digital license sold to me through Steam. Um, if I were to pirate a different version of that software, it would be illegal because I own this particular software for this particular system, but it is sold it as a good. Now, let's say tomorrow, NetherRealm Studios decided, hey, no more Mortal Kombat 11 ever. Everything is gone. No single player, no nothing. You can't touch this game anymore, even though you purchased a copy of this good. That would be kind of the argument that he makes is that they can't do that legally because it could be considered a fraudulent act because they sold it originally as a good. And 
I would again, I am inclined to agree. I am not a lawyer though. I just deal with fraud. I know the legal definition of fraud. It, it could definitely be there's a pretty strong argument for it. I'm interested to see Nick Ricada's take on it though because Nick is a, an actual lawyer. Um Nick is aware of it. Somebody asked him to look at it too. So, um so yeah, I will next time I talk to Nick, I'll bring it up to him as well and uh see what he thinks cuz I, I think it's a fairly solid case all things considered. If you're going to sell something as a good, it needs to be treated as a good all the way. You can't just take it from somebody once they purchase that that license. So, not to yeah. mention our pirating our pirating um, laws are written with the idea as, of software as a good. Yeah. So that's that's what I find interesting is there it's written with that assumption those laws are for pirating software, but mm. there's not a like nationally defined term that backs that in, in like like a Supreme Court case like Brown versus Board or whatever, mm-hmm. you know. Um. Just something interesting, and I haven't seen the video, so I don't know if this is brought up or not. Um, goods coming with terms and conditions. Is, well, is, is that evident literally anywhere else? Software is a weird part because it has a online component. So it's really not a term or condition for the whole thing. It's just part of the good. You know, I guess you could kind of equate it to like goods in a restaurant, like having mm-hmm. you have rules of the restaurant where they you can still you know you purchase the good, but they can throw you out yeah, if well, you b- misbehave. Well, I'm thinking I'm thinking of stuff like if you if you buy a game through uh, Xbox, it's registered to your Xbox Live account. Yeah, and your account gets banned for whatever reason. You mm-hmm. lose access to that game. You no yeah. longer possess that game for all intents and purposes. Yeah. That I'm not. That I'm, That's kind yeah. of a, a blurry area. I'm not completely sure on. So yeah. that would be one where we would definitely need to have a lawyer on to discuss it. Yep. Because and, and this is something. <laughs> this this is definitely a, a big part of why people think that technology and um, litigation are not in sync. They're not, admittedly, but at the same time, um, the lawsuits have to happen to to set this in stone. You know, there has to be a legal decision made because this isn't something that you would necessarily want to write a law on. You know, and that's the reason that the courts exist is to define, help define the law, not to create new law. Right. And this is one of those things where it's not a new law needs to be created. The law needs to be properly defined. Yeah. And and understood as well, po- well possibly updated for for the modern times. Well, no, that would that would be creating new law, or or yeah, amending yes, but, current law. So that's but in, I'm in talking addition, about in addition to the. Uh, so, so added legislation on top of it, right? But yeah. that that takes longer, admittedly. Yeah. And and our system is created yeah. for deadlock, so that's that's why the courts are there. Yeah, fucking and I'm perfectly DMCA fine with that. Never gonna. I needs to be fucking overturned. My God, that does. But again, it's you know there. At the very least, there are elements of it that can be um, taken mm. care of in the courts. Yeah, so. certainly. Okay, so on to quicker questions. Uh, Koopa's event. Actually, no. Uh, Jamil wants to know if given the can- chance, how would I write Captain America? So this is a Micah question. Um, if I were writing Captain America, hmm, man, that is a tricky one. Cause I wouldn't want to write something super political. But I would definitely be interested in addressing certain situations that have politics involved, in a sense. I would love the idea of... I'm a Baron Zemo fan, which is part of the reason why I like Civil War as much as I do. Zemo and Skull are two of my favorite villains of all time. Um, I always liked the idea of Zemo in a Doctor Doom position as opposed to Doctor Doom himself being a dignitary and how he would interact with other 
dignitaries that are in the superhero realm, like Namor, like Panther, like Doom, and putting Cap in an area, a tough area, um, on how to deal with this, because he has both friends and enemies when it comes down to it. Obviously, he's friends with Namor. Obviously, he's very good friends with with T'Challa. Well, he's very good friends with Namor. Very good friends with T'Challa. Mm-hmm. So, but he and he despises Doom. But I would probably put him in a position where some of the things he does hurt Doom, but the things that Zemo is doing are um, v- truly violating the sovereignty, not just of Doom and and Latveria, but also the people in Latveria. And of course, Cap, you know, believes in freedom for all people. So, you know, he he would feel obliged to aid in some manner. So, needless to say, that is part, like, that's how I would see the first arc going, would be that sort of thing. I like, I like Zemo quite a bit, so that's that's kind of the route that, that yeah, I, I think I would take. Um, other such stories that I think would be interesting to do... Um, I always thought it was silly that they never had Cap and Sharon tie the knot. I think I would do that. I had this idea of um, Cap discussing relationships and settling down with Peter Parker. And how that conversation would play out. I always thought that would be really interesting because it would be such a role reversal because Cap has been a, the way that Cap or the way that Tony and Spider-Man are in the MCU is how Cap and Peter have been in the mainline, you know, comic universe. Peter grew up idolizing Captain America and um, looked up to Tony too, but Cap was always a, a tighter relationship. The, the Peter, Cap, uh, Peter Iron Man thing is from Civil War from the comic around that time and New Avengers you know that was how that sort of thing fostered prior to New Avengers prior to Bendis it was Cap and Peter were, were, were pretty tight you know he really looked up to him quite a bit always saw him as kind of the, the standard that he had to hold him, hold himself to so um, anyway so that is that would be a great role reversal that I would like to experiment with in, in Cap's life. Um, other than that, I can't really think of a whole lot. Anything to add, no Hatman? I have no idea how I'd write Cap. So you're my editor. What do you think of the idea? Not horrible. Not, Not horrible. horrible. Not horrible. Naturally, in... And you know me with this, I'd, I'd have to see a detailed plan before I can say, okay, you know, this is really looking good. Yeah. And I outline all my shit. For yeah. For those who don't know, I outline everything before yeah. I script it. Yeah. The detail, the detail outlines so where I can go, okay, now I definitely get where you're, where you're going with this. Yep. <laughs> okay. So what else we got? Oh, Leonardo Juan. Who would win in a fight, Swamp Thing or Man Thing? Man Thing, he's actually considerably more durable. And anything that knows fear burns at the Man Thing's touch. Alec knows fear. I see that, as a, I, I see that as a Swamp Thing fan. There you go. Man Thing burned the Hulk. The Hulk is also considerably stronger than Swamp Thing is. Yeah. So... Also, don't take the MCU as the standard for how strong the Hulk is. It actually doesn't even touch how strong Hulk is in the comics. No. Hulk held up a mountain without too many problems. This The MCU Hulk held up like kind of part of a mountain and was struggling with one arm. Yeah, so, a building. Yeah. So, though the image was... there's a there's, Thinking back on Endgame, there's a lot of visual indicators to popular Marvel comics and mm-hmm. series. Is, there's homages to Secret War, to Infinity Gauntlet, to... Thanos Quest, so on and so forth, to Hickman's Avengers. The the art style is very Hickman's Avengers, um, so on and so forth. Iron Man's color scheme for the nanotech armor in in that is an allusion to the Mark III in um in the comics. Mm-hmm. So, and sort of an homage to the and the faceplate is an homage to the uh, to the modular armor, which is my favorite because that was the '90s armor. Mm-hmm. This the Force Works armor and and the, that stuff. Um, 
All right. So, Koopa's Revenge Home wants to know, between the loot box-esque crypt, the grinding taking literal thousands of hours to unlock everything for free, the woke-ass bullshit, uh, he's talking Mortal Kombat 11, I don't think that there's that much of it, but um, the uglier designs, don't agree there. Um, basically, everything that has occurred with Mortal Kombat 11, on top of the devs, community managers, and Ed Boon attacking the fan base, not to mention the press bashing, the violence as well, the very people get Ed Boon pandering to, do I get to say a big fat I told you so or what? Well, not on the designs. The designs in the game, I think, look really good. Um, it's just there, there's not as much bust to the women. They yeah. built them. They had them built more athletically. I am perfectly fine with that. I find athletic women to be very attractive. So, because um, you look at like some of the details on on the women and their facial details specifically, very beautiful. Like, damn, especially Scarlet. Damn, she creepy, but she fine. <laughs> so, but, um, but no, I, I don't agree with that part of it, but you, there is a big, a big, I told you so with a lot of the other stuff. Um, yeah. though, though a lot of it was not something you could have predicted. I don't think anybody could have predicted. I think that, um, there's problems at NetherRealm behind the scenes from what I've heard. They want to move on from Mortal Kombat for a while. They want to do other mm. stuff. And I can understand why this is the 11th game, and it's what they're literally named after, after Midway folded. Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, it wouldn't surprise me if there was a contractual obligation to do this game from Warner Brothers, and they weren't ready to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if, if they're in almost like a old-school Call of Duty thing, like you do a... Uh, Mortal Kombat and then Injustice and then Mortal Kombat and then Injustice. Yeah. Because uh, also keep in mind there was also no appearance of this game at E3. It was announced by yeah. itself. Um, and then came out three or four months after the announcement, I think. Yeah. yeah, it was announced during the winter. Yeah. So, now I like the game. I think it's got really good gameplay. It's very fun to play. Um, stuff like that. Um, but, at the same time, the way that they promoted it and the way that they were, you know, kind of giving the middle finger to the fan base and the way that they treated the fan base, I thought was very childish, um, very arrogant, you know, it's, and, but it, that is the vibe that I get is that the part of the reason for that is they're ready to move on to do some, do something different. Um, so yeah, it is, it's a stupid situation. And I think that given that the sales are not doing as good, plus the mistakes that they made in the development cycle that they've admitted hurt the opening sales. I will say this though. I think that cause I've been, I played the update for a bit when I got home. It is a lot better now that it's been updated than it was at launch. Um, I do think it will rebound from this. I think they will probably make up for it after Evo season is over. I think people are going to see a lot of the crazy shit that um, Sonic Fox has been pulling off in the game. And they're going to see the Evo finals and the, the finals will probably be very competitive and it might sell some copies um, to certain crowds. We'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, I, I think that this, this opening launch is a combination of foolishly giving into certain social justice ideas of, you know, bashing the fan base and things like that trying to appease people that you shouldn't try to appease. But on top of that, also development mistakes that they made that normally, or that should not be made, and just a bad PC launch, which is the second in a row for a Mortal Kombat game. So, yeah. There was a delayed launch on PC for Injustice, and it was a really good launch. So I think that that's a lesson that that Warner Brothers and NetherRealm need to learn from. But uh, we'll see what happens there. So don't agree on the on the designs. I think they actually look a lot better, in, in artistically speaking. Um, I, I and again, I don't not I don't think that women in fighting games need to have triple F tits. It's just I think it's kind of distracting whenever, especially on a, on a photorealistic sort of art style like this. If the, if it's more exaggerated, that's something different. Like like Street Fighter Five is a more exaggerated art style. It doesn't bother me as much there because it's not trying for that photorealistic style. This is. So, and this pulls it off really well, too, just like Injustice 2 did. So. I finally got to play a little bit of it last night. It's not mm -hmm. bad. It's not bad, except the, God, they really, 
They really do need to fix the fucking towers, though. Yeah, the towers are a nightmare. Or, well, they were. They're not Christ. now. Uh, like, well, I beat I beat an advanced one today, like with ease compared did to, the, to did the, the patch come through today. Yeah, it came through on PC today. Okay, because yeah, I was I was playing it yesterday and it was it wasn't patched yet. And oh my god, yeah, like I, when a when a fatal when a fatal blow does like ten percent max damage. Oh shit, something's not right. Yeah, it's it was a uh, it was it was a shit show. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, even though, even still, there's some things that I don't completely agree with it. I don't like the idea of the chests in the crypt being randomized in their locations. Yeah. Everybody leaves the same shit, but I don't like well, the randomized so, locations. Like, like the the flaming chests and whatnot, the heart chests. Yeah, anything, aren't... anything with a heart. Yeah, anything with a heart is uh, that's a static location. They're yeah. always there. Yeah. Everything else, you know, randomized in regards to location. Amount of stuff you get, not random. So, and then finally, Brian Gilmartin wants to know, which video game console generation would you consider your favorite? Mine would be fourth, SNES and Genesis, and sixth, PS2, GameCube, Dreamcast, and Xbox. Um, Definitely for me, fourth and seventh. Hmm, interesting. Um, I think the SNES is probably the greatest console to ever be created. Definitely had the greatest lineup. Um, a lot of my favorite video games ever are on the mm-hmm. SNES. Um, and then seventh for me, there were a couple franchises that I think really hit their stride and were fucking incredible. Gears of War being the top, not top name. Then you have the mm-hmm. first Dragon Age game. You have the first two Mass Effect games. Um, Assassin's Creed. What else is there? And that's where Call of Duty really hit its stride. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, though. Seventh generation was really defined by the online aspect. Yeah, it was. You know, it was could, definitely a shooter-heavy generation. Yeah. Well, not not just with shooters. Like you could at that point, you know, the the idea of couch co-op was was starting to die. Yeah. And I don't know. There's there's something about there's something about couch co-op or you know having the late night parties with with soda and chips and stuff you know everyone gathered around a, a fucking crt you know it's it's just something fun and charming about that and you know i i want to say like fourth and in fifth generations because of that but honestly looking back fifth generation a lot of the games there are really not as good as as i remember of course you know once you take off the nostalgia goggles you, you can really see things for what they are like I'm going to be called a heretic for this, absolutely, but I don't think Super Mario 64 holds up at all. It really has aged. It's aged. It's showing its age it these is, days. Seriously. Like, games like Crash Bandicoot, on the other hand, I think I have held up pretty well. Yeah. But some of those early platformers and whatnot, it's no. Metal Gear Solid, oddly enough, not in the voice acting, but in other elements, is actually has shown, the original has shown, shown its age. But then again, you have to yeah. keep in mind, if you play that and then you play Twin Snakes, it feels yeah, like a it's, mountain it's, of difference. Just the oh, little yeah. little things that they added in 2. Oh, yeah. Or even uh, or even just, you know, go up to Metal Gear Solid 2 and just the quality of life improvements are so much better. <laughs> Speaking of, hey, Jack, you know what today is? <laughs> huh? Oh. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Christ. Yeah. We're recording this on April thirtieth. Yeah. By the way. <laughs> so I, I do really love cool. the I do love the second game though. It's the ending is fucking prophetic. Oh, oh my god! Like, fuck. Yeah, it's Be- weird because I did not like it for the longest time, and then I went back and played it, and then you're like, uh, "Damn, this is really ahead of its time." And then I was think way ahead of its. Time. That's why I think it is so much more beloved now. Oh, than yeah. it was at the time. Oh yeah, because people fucking hated it. Well, they were divided on it. I, I think that um, a lot of people like the first game more. Now Everyone, I'm at the, now I'm at the point I like I like two is like a son. It's weird for me. Like storyline wise, my favorites are two and three. Mm-hmm. And yeah, would have been five if they had if Kojima had gotten to finish it. Yeah. But 
Yeah, it's no, yeah, it was definitely ahead of its time. I mean, what was that? Two thousand two? Yeah. When that came out? Yeah, I was a sophomore in high school. That was at least a decade ahead of its time. If not more. At, at, at least, yeah. Like it's it's insane yeah. when you think about it. Yep. And yeah, for those of you who have never played Metal Gear Solid because of its reputation with certain very vocal people online, go and play it. Um, yeah, please. Bring popcorn, prepare for, set a day aside, because they are long games. But oh, yeah. um, not like Final Fantasy long, but long. Yeah. Um, and then from that generation, from the seventh generation specifically, though, um, you had Metal Gear Solid 4. And you had Metal Gear Rising. You had, to bring, you had to bring several tubs of popcorn along for that movie. Yeah, that's a weekend. <laughs> that, that game's a weekend. But it does play yeah. well. Oh, absolutely, yeah. But it, it the, the movie comparisons... Accurate. Yeah, very, very accurate. But, um... Yeah, Seventh, Seventh Gen had a whole bunch of really good games. Then you have the really? Arkham's. Yeah, see, now you're just you're going into territory that I'm not as familiar with. Well, you need to you still need to play at least Arkham City. I do, I do. At least City. City is incredible. I do. I think I've got no Arkham Asylum is what I've got. Asylum's a great one too, but um, City GTA, is GTA Four was seventh generation. <laughs> so was Red Dead Redemption. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh technically GTA 5 was 7th gen too technically GTA 5 was too um, the perfect version of GTA 5 is 8th is generation but yeah. uh, what else is there um, of course the the God later, of War God of War 3 mm-hmm. the later Bungie Halo games yeah so Reach would be the um, big one I would think mm-hmm. and 3 um, yep. what's another really good one because we haven't mentioned any I... PlayStation games. Yeah. So, The Last of Us. Yes. Um, the Uncharted games, all of them. Yes. Well, except for four. Except for four, but one, two, and three. Yeah. Um, I, f- I completely forgot four existed. Uh, <laughs> I, put, I, put heavy, I put Heavy Rain on the list, too, just because, like, for the time, it well, was something... It, it was a technological yeah. success, if nothing Absolutely. else. Absolutely, yeah. Visually still... speaking, there wasn't a yeah. lot of games that touched it. No, uh, uh-uh. because I, I remember I remember playing it in and my dad came in the room and he was like, "Are you watching a movie?" I'm like, "No, this is a video game." He's like, "What the hell? That looks just about real." Yeah, it. I remi- mean, now you go back and it doesn't at all. But, yeah, but still, it was still like visually yeah. speaking was way way ahead oh. of, oh, yeah, of a absolutely. lot of games. Absolutely. Um, yeah. what's another good one? Uh, Killzone Three mm. is another another good example. Killzone um, Three was pretty Resistance. good. Resistance. Resistance, the the trilogy. Yep. Um. What else is there? Uh, I feel like there's stuff on PlayStation that we're forgetting. Infamous. Infamous. Bioshock. Bioshock. And Infinite. Fuck two, but God, I like two. I I, I don't. I it doesn't. It's too many. Too many. Story story not nearly as good, but gameplay. Gameplay. I like the the fact that you could dual wield. Yeah, I thought that was so an improvement, but um, Infinite was so much better. But uh, what else is there? I'm just thinking about like Wii games. You got like Super Mario Galaxy and such. Galaxy and Galaxy Two. Yep. You have um, Twilight Princess mm-hmm. as well, which a lot of people consider to be the best Zelda game since Ocarina. Which I find well at the at the time they be. they did because now it doesn't have as as good of a reputation. Which is weird. It was so well it, loved it, when it came out. It's it is really weird because at the time like Wind Waker hadn't really caught on yet. Yeah, I guess, a lot of pe- I I think a lot of people were soured on Wind Waker because of how it kind of droned on a little bit. Yeah, well, not even that. Just the 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 visuals for it. Well, there's that too. Yeah, not but a lot of people like too much because we. Waker was great. It it really was like the the sailing things. Yes, that that droned on. And the how was it? The Forsaken Fortress was a pain in the fucking ass. But still, it it was great. I could never get into it. I I just, I really didn't like it personally. That's. But um, what else? Like is I didn't there? really care for Ocarina that much. And Majora's Mask, I 
But there's um, stands, also but... Brawl. Brawl came out ah, that generation. Ah, yes, Brawl. The, the black sheep of the Smash Brothers family. Which is weird, because I love Brawl. I really do. I'm trying to think what else there is. Street Fighter Four came out that mm-hmm. generation. Um... trying to think what else there is oddly enough that was kind of a dark period for bandai namco but dark souls came out that generation mm-hmm. yep um well yeah dark souls demon souls um another one of my favorite games um fight night champion came out probably the best sports game of that generation uh let's I'm not forget deus ex show. human revolution mm-hmm I'm just thinking back to Skyrim, Fallout Three, Fallout New Vegas. Those were he- he- those were fucking huge. Count Oblivion in there too. Yes, that's right. Oblivion came at the right right at the beginning. <laughs> Remember horse armor? Oh god! <laughs> Remember how big of a deal horse armor was? Oh god! Look back don't... at that and then at the DLC shit we talk about today. Oh god! It's night uh, and day difference. <laughs> yeah, but um. What else is from that generation? Marvel Ultimate Alliance mm-hmm. was another big Marvel one. Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Yep, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 was another really big one. Um, oh, God. There's so many we could continue to go on about. There, um, Call of Duty games. Yeah, I mentioned Call of Duty uh, already. Yeah. Because you had, you had some good ones. 4, World at War. Mm-hmm. Um, World at War like superseded everybody's expectations. Um, oh, yeah. Black Ops. Black Ops is fucking great. Uh-huh. People I'm constantly tell me, oh, there's no games where you kill commies. Motherfucking Black Ops, the <laughs> first one. Fucking, like, that's all you kill, is commies. It's set during the Cold War. What the fuck do you think you're fighting? So, you break out of a commie prison and kill a bunch of commies. Like, seriously? Skewer the winged beast! <laughs> <laughs> Mason! Oh, God. <sighs> Gary Oldman, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> he was great. He, he put like an effort into that video game that it didn't really deserve. <laughs> Ed Harris kind of phones it in, but Gary Oldman's in it. I love it. Fucking love it. Um, what else are we? I feel like we're still forgetting some stuff. Uh, the Forza games I think got really big around that time. Um. What about handheld games? I wouldn't know. Never, never played handhelds really. Aside from Game Boy the, back in the day, you had like you know the all the fucking Nintendo Wi-Fi shit, and then of course PSP was out around that time too. So that'd be um, Portable Ops and Peace Walker. Peace Walker was a thing. Peace Walker was a thing. Everyone always forgets about Portable Ops. It's not as bad as... Yeah, people as still hate it. Reputation. It's not as bad as his reputation. It's because Kojima didn't develop it. Yeah, and the story is kind of forgettable, but... Yeah, yeah the, the only thing people remember about it is that it's the introduction of Gray Fox. Uh, introduction of Gray Fox and um, Roy Campbell. Oh, that's right. Campbell's in there, too. Yep. But, um... I'm trying to think what else was there. Because I feel like there's something else that was like a big release around that time period that we're forgetting. I mentioned Mass Effect. I mentioned dra- the first Dragon Age. He said Assassin's Creed. said Assassin's Creed. Saints Row! Mm. Saints Row is another really big one that came around that time. That's what we're forgetting. Because 1, 2, and 3 were all on that uh, in that generation. Seems like there's something else. Mm. Hmm. The orange box in Portal. That's what we're forgetting. That's, yes. Forgetting Portal. Yep, the or- well, everything in the orange box. Yeah. Well, Portal was the was the one that debuted on the orange box. Yeah. Cuz cuz uh Half-Life 2 had been out for some years at that point. Yeah. 
but yeah, never never forget uh, Team Fortress Two. Also, oh god, yeah, that was yeah, that, that they never updated thing. on consoles ever. Never. Uh-uh. That that's the shitty thing about the console version of the Orange Box. It never got an update. Nope. Never. But Portal. Yeah, Portal and Portal Two. Ah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Never forget the cake is a lie meme. Yeah. Fucking companion cube everywhere. Went on forever. That is like the deadest of dead memes, in my opinion. Well, the cake is a lie? Yeah, it's like, Jesus Christ, people were repeating that way too long. But yeah, so, yeah, a ton of really great games. I think the only generation that had as high of a compare, you know, um comparable amount of great games to the SNES and the Genesis. And oddly enough, it's it's the it is the most competitive generation outside of that generation. It is easily the most competitive um in comparison to a lot of them because it's where everybody was ramping it up because the because everybody was trying to reach the Wii's sales numbers, but PlayStation and Xbox had the better software mm-hmm. by and large cuz we had a big time shovelware problem. Oh dear Lord. To the point where they stopped issuing the seal, Nintendo seal of approval to Mm -hmm. anything. It was, Oh my God. The dance games, the rhythm games. Oh fuck me. You would, you would know, you would know everybody had a Wii, but they only owned Wii sports. Any idea how many grandparents I knew that owned Wii Sports? Hated that thing. My parents still have one. Like my my dad and stepmom still have one. Mm-hmm. They'll never buy another console ever, <laughs> unless you tell my dad that Operation Wolf is on it or Contra, because he loves those <laughs> games. But tell him tell him Contra Four is on the DS. No, he'll never play a handheld. He didn't even like my Game Boy. He kept taking it away from me, so I'd do my fucking homework. (laughs) Ironically, my dad was the one who gave me his old Game Boy break. (laughs) Jeez. But, uh, but anyway. But yeah, like, God, I I even think, like, trailers were better in that point. Like, Mad World for Gears. Mm -hmm. I would argue greatest game trailer ever. That's right. Mad World was a game, too, wasn't it? Yes, there was a game called Mad World on the Wii. (laughs) But no, seriously, like the the Mad Mad World advertisement, you could like all I have to do is say that and people remember it instantly in their heads. Cuz it is it's so iconic. Mm-hmm. To the point where they play an instrumental version of Mad World during a very sad scene in the third game. Mhm. I was surprised that they actually did it. Dude, that game that was... had a lot of surprises in it. Yeah. Yeah. Part of the reason it's one of my favorites ever. I love Gears 3. That's just... that Epic Games at that time was is one of those studios, sort of like Bungie during the previous um, generation, where it fe- or Bioware during that generation, the previous generation as well, where it felt like they could do no wrong. Well, Bioware, no. Bioware had that, had that reputation all the way up until, I think, Dragon Age 2. Because you had Knights, you had Jade Empire, you had the first Mass Effect, you had the second Mass Effect, then and then you had the first Dragon Age, and then just Dragon Age Two dropped, and it, a lot of people lost faith in them ever since. I didn't, I didn't disp- I actually liked Dragon Age Two, still do, but I can see why people didn't like it as much as the first game. But um, but yeah, like Epic at that time was just they had so much talent at that studio at the time and they were all in their primes and I mean keep in mind Cliff Blazinski is still living off the money he made during Gears of War it made him as rich as he is he made him rich enough to be to be a fucking idiot all the time so that's saying something like people don't understand how fucking popular that game series was so well we are out of that questions. That it. That is it. That's it. So, a lot of in-depth answer, which I love doing. 
I'm sure that the comments on this one are, are going to be like, oh my god, you forgot this game. You yeah, I, I, game. I, while we were oh, while we were mentioning all that shit, I had a feeling that people were that are, people are like going to be screaming at their fucking monitors. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, somebody's going to go, thank you, when I say Bioshock. <laughs> probably hard-boiled entertainment. Probably. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot it. Honestly, I, I love Bioshock. Yeah. So, I, I like Infinite, oddly enough. That's my favorite out of the trilogy. But, but yeah, that is all we have. So, if you enjoyed the video, of course, like, share, and subscribe. We will be back this coming Saturday, barring anything crazy, to, um, you know, have the podcast as per usual. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I can't think of anything to close on. Hatman, what do you think? I don't have anything to close on either. Then we're going to go ahead and take off. My name is Micah Curtis. And I'm Alex Bublin, also known as the Hat Man. See you guys this coming weekend. Davis Fault. Davis Fault.